crazy days, hasn't it? It's like crazy might be an understatement for some of the stuff that's gone down, but no, we're not we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about some stuff that was actually exciting. You know, we kind of had the the pre-show for the big alpha event happening this Sunday by having an epic alpha event last Sunday and Saturday for that matter. So here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to do you a favor as opposed to other people who might do like tiny segments about this and that when it comes to wrestling. I'm going to give a full back-to-back -back run from TakeOver San Antonio to the Royal Rumble to even something that might be happening this weekend. My gift to you. How, oh, how did we get that started? Well, very simple. Let's talk about the countdown show that they were doing for NXT TakeOver San Antonio. Very professional. Very, it's got that that sports center vibe. They're talking about, you know, tail of the tape type scenarios. Even bringing in some new blood to carry on the traditions of NXT. Where Corey Graves is becoming more of a permanent fixture in WWE's Raw and pay-per-view events. Indie wrestling legend Nigel McGuinness one of the first back-to-back -back champions of Ring of Honor has been called up to represent NXT he does a really good job I mean he's been doing it already since he was forced to retire a lot earlier than he had hoped and expected but he's taken to wrestling commentary and wrestling stats like a fish in water it's so smooth it's almost as if he's been there since the beginning and surprisingly some ladies came in to help out preferably Ember Moon she's not on the shelf or anything like that but she did throw her two cents in about the big four-way match that the defending women's NXT champion was going to have to walk into. And she was there. I mean, I'm saying this right now. Clearly, we don't want anything bad to happen to her. She's done Texas proud. She's moving on and doing the WWE proud. But if she gets put in a spot where she can't compete or even has to sit some time out for one reason or another this is her second home she does very well behind the desk and honestly everyone's pushing diversity so much why not actually have someone who can do the job well as well as represent another area of the world there you go with that but the actual NXT show is very good I mean it's been for so long why stop now but we kick everything off with the debut of another indie darling a man who was nicknamed the gatekeeper of PWG I'm talking about Roderick Strong facing off against CN who's been gradually proving his worth more and more by having great matches an excellent fighting spirit and clearly not backing down to these guys who are claiming he should just step aside Roderick Strong already proving he can go and one of the new masters of the backbreaker so many variations and yet he executes them all so well to use an old phrase of mine when doing commentary crisp like lettuce but CM wasn't a pushover by any means his fiery attitude came out 
their exchanges were fast paced, hard hitting, and believe me, that's just the first match of the night. Roderick ended up coming out on top, but he had to earn it. He had to earn it. So Cien, don't keep kicking yourself about it. I know the same thing happened when you faced Rude, who that night was taking on Shinsuke Nakamura for the title. But they had to earn those. There was some pushover that they just swooped in and took a victory from. Keep fighting. Speaking of a guy who keeps fighting, we go to the next match on the card. Ty Dillinger versus Eric Young. Why is this going on? It's very simple. Ty Dillinger, the perfect 10, had unfortunately been coming up short a couple of times here and there. But these losses began to stack up and kind of ate away at him. He had a nice impassioned promo speech about I didn't want to keep letting people down. I wanted to prove he was a winner. I wanted to get the job done. So out comes Eric Young, the leader of Sanity. A new group on the block that are pretty much the anarchist cookbook if it achieved sentient life. He offered his assistance. He offered to bring out the real Ty Dillinger. Especially because he actually trained Ty Dillinger. So if anyone knows how to bring out the Ty that needs to be, it would be him, right? And as tempting as it might be to have a pack of hyenas watch your back, Ty turned it down. Now, of course, Eric is a sensible young man with understanding of people's feelings and things like that, he, he, beat the, he beat the crap out of Ty over and over again, obviously. He kept mugging him, and the asking became recommending, and the recommending became ordering him to join Sanity. To which Ty said, no. Which leads to the big match in San Antonio. And it was brutal. And the perfect ten got one of his nicest pops so far. There was plenty of energy crackling for him. The crowd kept just ten, 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 which was distracting to the referee because when he's trying to do his out of the ring 10 count they had to keep watching his hands of course you didn't think Eric Young would be stupid enough to just do an honorable one-on-one -on -one contest with Ty Dillinger oh no his other two wolves were right there with him because Nikki had a very important match, so she couldn't be there. The numbers game was certainly against Ty. That doesn't mean he was just eaten up and spat out. Funny thing about all that extra muscle, that means much larger target. Ty took advantage of this time and time again but even a well-placed tiebreaker couldn't get the job done not that young kicked out no it was his own goon squad throwing his foot under the ropes forcing the wreck to break the count ty was starting to see red understandably so
But Young ended up getting the win. Were we really shocked by that? No. What we were stunned by was how much harder Young had to fight than we thought he would. Because Ty did not just bow. Good thing about Ty Dillinger is he didn't just curl up in a ball and go away. There's more for him. So then we have the NXT women's title. Now of course I already mentioned that Asuka was the one defending and Nikki of Sanity was involved she wasn't the only one. No. Billy Kay and Peyton Royce were involved as well. So for weeks leading up to this, they all kept trying to assert themselves one way or another. Because when you deal with Billy Kay, you deal with Peyton Royce and vice versa. Those two are inseparable. And Nikki, she's a part of sanity. Which means she has more than enough muscle. But after the countless assaults, the jumpings, the insults, the cutoffs, Asuka finally stormed into William Regal's office and demanded. That she defend her belt against them. To which Regal said, Who? All of them. Oh, yeah. Four way NXT women's title. And Asuka is going to let them know why she's the Empress of Tomorrow. With such a prestigious title on the you know, up for grabs, people really wondered if Kay and Royce could work together. The most shocking part about that, they can. Very well. They had each other's backs the entire contest. So it was like a handicap match with an extra enforcer running in and out. But man, it finally came to pass. First off, everyone began brawling around the announce table. Oscar was down, Billy was up, so was Royce, and there was Nikki. And Royce and Kay end up suplexing Nikki through the secondary table. Oh yeah! Back in the day, the only time women were ever put through tables was if some big burly guy did it to her. And she was usually like this big around anyway, so it just... I mean, it could be disturbing, but... still. Actually seeing women do this to each other... Is just another thing to showcase that it's evolving yet again. With Nikki out of the contest, straight up handicap match. Royce and K, Royce and K, continuous assault on Asuka. But Asuka is a different kind of breed and was almost enjoying the abuse being laid upon her before she fired up and launched kick after kick after strike after throw upon her two opponents. Until finally, she got the win. 
and Asuka retained her title. The crowd couldn't have been any more pleased if they were all given free ice cream afterwards. Now, there was the tag match. DIY, the defending champions, Tomasa and Gargano. Against Akam and Rezar, the authors of Pain, who have been guided by none other than the legendary Elrig himself. DIY had been on a good tear, fighting champions, stepping up to all kinds of competition, but this was going to be their biggest test. Why were they tested? The authors of Pain just look like they deserve that name. These guys are giants, solid individuals. I mean, they clearly lift, bro. You have DIY. They keep pulling it off. They keep pulling it off. They keep pulling it off. Could they do it again? Maybe if it hadn't been for the fact that the authors of Pain had made themselves known on numerous occasions, yeah chance were at 100%, maybe that would have been the case, but they weren't. Not that you could tell. They fought through the pain. Shot for shot, hold for hold, throw for throw, move for move. They kept trying, and they kept trying, and they kept trying. But that was it. They were trying while the authors were succeeding. And then it finally happened. The Super Collider Power Bombs. One, two, kick out. They're still in it, folks. DIY is still fighting. The crowd is on fire. I mean, it's Texas after all, so yeah. More back and forth, more back and forth. Elrig is losing his mind. He's never had to sweat when it comes to the authors until now. But all they had to do was write that final chapter. They got the job done. Times like that that just really make you think. Is the story done with DIY? We'll find out, won't we? One of the most hyped up grudge matches to unexpectedly happen. Robert Roode wants nothing more than to be recognized no matter where he goes. He doesn't see himself a B-lister in any way. In fact, he's an A-plus player in his own mind. Shinsuke Nakamura carried NXT on his back since taking that belt for a second time. And after dealing with other TNA alumni, like Samoa Joe, you would think that Nakamura would be able to handle the threat that was Robert Roode. His entrance more glorious than ever.
channeling Ric Flair being escorted by six women, three on each side. Crowd chanting his name and his song. While Nakamura's Nakamura's seizure inducing entrance like flickering lights, not like he was having a seizure, but his flickering lights. Perfect head games. And there were head games galore. Back and forth. These two did not let up. So much so that Nakamura Shinkasa, his knee strike, didn't quite hit its mark the way he'd hoped. And he messed his knee up in the process. A couple of spills to the outside. Rude began to pick up on it and capitalized, going after that leg again and again and again, Nakamura doing everything he can to keep this ravenous wolf off his leg. But you could see it start to show. Nakamura, the king of strong style, actually crying out in pain. The head trainers came down to the ring. Even contemplated throwing the match out. Nakamura wouldn't have any of that. So Bobby Roode finally just slapped on a single leg crab on that knee. Held on for dear life. Roode desperately clutching, slapping on that single leg crab. Nakamura screamed. Finally escaped. And even though the ref wanted to call the match, Nakamura fought it off. Root swung in. Hit Nakamura with a second glorious DDT. And won the match. Some things changed. Rude actually getting at least half the audience to chant with him. The other half, not so much. So is NXT a little more glorious now? Or is there at least one more go at strong style? We'll find out, won't we?